Again, as I've told you, our theme tonight is love notes to God. So last week's homework assignment, the first assignment that you had as your walk away. What is your earliest memory of love? And if you didn't know your earliest and that was your stumbling, what is an early memory of love? Don't, don't, uh, please don't let my um, intolerant question or inflexible question cause you to stumble. So feel free to get a little bit less than specific if, if my question is too specific. So I'm gonna ask it a little more rounded on the edges and say this, what is an early memory for you uh, when you first experience love of some sort? You want us to answer now? Yes, ma'am, please. Okay. <clears throat> My earliest memory is I was the first girl born after seven boys, seven brothers. <laughs> and of those seven brothers, three of them had passed away. So I only had four brothers left. I didn't know the other three. But my earliest thing was uh, that my dad was so happy he had a girl that when he was doing his farm work, uh, you know, with the horses and plowing the field. I was sitting in his lap and thank God I never fell off or anything. Mm. And uh, then I remember my, as I was getting older, I remember the love that my family shown me. And uh, I know they spoiled me. What a beautiful recall. That's a lovely uh, memory to share with us. Thank you. Who else? <clears throat> I'm gonna jump in. Um, my father was not a very affectionate person, and um, this isn't going to sound like love to a child, but as an adult looking back on the experience, I know it was an act of love. I can remember as a child when we would get sick with a cold and things like that, we were having such a hard time breathing. My father would take that Vicks maple rub, put it in a pot of hot water, and he would sit under a blanket with us on his lap. And to me, sitting with us under that is an act of love on his part in, in you know, wanting to, to be with us. And uh, uh, he never, he didn't uh, take vacations. He didn't spend any money at work because he wanted everything that he made. We didn't have a lot. He wanted everything that was made to go to the family as a whole. And it was a sacrificial love uh, that, that he made. And it was such a wonderful example to me as I was growing up. Uh, cool. 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 Thank you. Who else? Um, this, this would be more of a, a tradition. I don't know if you would put it in the category of love. But we had a tradition when I was growing up that we would go to this place called Manor's Christmas Tree Farm. Since I was a tiny, tiny little kid, meaning that at two feet of snow, I was almost buried, <laughs> being, that <laughs> short, being that, that short. And my dad <laughs> getting me up out of the snow. Uh, we always made it a competition to see who would pick up, who would pick the tree. And out of 27 times, I won like 12 or 13 times. So not bad between me and my sister. But what I really, what I really loved and felt love within a group of strangers was we would go back to the barn. There was a huge hearth, like you see in those old mansions, six foot long hearths with a fire. There was a um, piano there and there was warm apple cider and donuts mm. and everybody was just so nice to each other well it was around christmas time and everybody would gather around this piano and somebody would uh, would just come and start playing the piano and sing christmas songs and all that but that was my first experience of i guess you would say love with strangers yeah, I think you described love a couple different times within that, that explanation. <coughs> beautiful, beautiful. Who else? Thank you for sharing so far, all of you. Well, I have an early memory. I don't know, for, I don't know if you guys remember, but 
the million dollar movie. Okay. Oh, yeah. But what they would do is they'd play old movies and they'd play it a couple of times, you know, on, on the same week. And I can remember staying up with my father and watching the million dollar movie, you know, and sometimes I would be so sleepy, but I didn't want to fall asleep because I really enjoyed watching it with him. That's beautiful. As, you're, as you all are describing these memories, I'm picturing you in the moment remembering this and then mm -hmm. probably even experiencing a little bit of the emotion that goes with yeah. that. That's what imprints in our minds do. So yeah. it's, always, it's always lovely to recall. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Hello. I don't know if this is an actual memory or if it's because people told me about it, you know, but I have this picture. I don't know if you can see this picture. All right. Oh, yeah. So now that's me on the shoulders yep. of Brother Silver Copa. Are you able oh. to see? Yeah. That's cool. Brother Silver Copa and me on his shoulder. Maybe I can turn it in such a way that it- uh, I see it. Uh, we can see it perfectly. Okay. Yeah. We can see yes. it perfect. perfectly. Uh, yeah. I, believe that this, I believe this is at the Detroit Zoo. And I oh. think we had a family or a, or a Sunday school picnic or something. But I have to be maybe, maybe three years old in this picture. Mm. And Maybe it's because people have told me or because I've studied that picture, but having not had a father growing up, the, we lived two blocks from the church building. So we would always have people in our home. Now, they were like Brother Kenny Brown, if you know Brother Kenny Brown, yeah. and, uh, <clears throat> and deacons of the church and people like that who would be in our home. And I later understood that that was because <clears throat> they were coming to shovel our snow or cut the grass or visit the widows or, or something like that. And the, the, um, so being on that photographs are very special to me because uh, being on his shoulders, my brain fabricates the memory that I can remember being on his shoulders, I'm sure. It's only because of my imagining, sure. but but nonetheless, it's those. It is the um, there. There were times later in life when when everyone else had a dad, and I didn't have a dad. And mm -hmm. Paul Paul Peterson came out with a song called "My Dad," and I couldn't sing that song, and the, you know, the things like that. But I go back, and I never had the because I never knew it, I never m missed it growing up. And so the, um, I would consider that all the times that those brothers came to our home, that that was mm -hmm. um, the expression of love. Now I had another one, I couldn't find the photograph and it was me being around that same age, but I'm wearing these little Buster Brown shoes <laughs> that had a, a, they were brown and they had a little white vamp. You know, the mm -hmm. vamp is the top part of the shoe, right? Mm -hmm. And it was white. <clears throat> and I know, I can remember those with a real memory that I loved those shoes. So I know mm -hmm. we're not talking about, no, I know we're talking about people love, but this was love, love. And I can distinctly remember my Uncle Ray taking my photograph on our front porch and saying, you really like those shoes, don't you? And I remember looking down and I remember saying, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I like my shoes with the white vamp. And we found a photograph and I have it framed in my home and I can run downstairs and get it. <laughs> but the, the, the concept of that you, uh, you know, you attach to something, I think I identified with it and, and it was fashion. Too, and the very fact that oh it was, my gosh, it starts there. <laughs> I had that's where it started, Terry. Oh, and, yeah. 
<laughs> I, I now have an adult sized pair of brown shoes with a white vamp that they, today they call them spectators. You know, they're called mm -hmm. spectator shoes. So. <laughs> but, uh, nice recall, both of those. I'm going to tell you a silver copa story later. I don't want to take away from that because that what you shared, the tenderness of, of the surrogate fathers is, mm -hmm. is beautiful for me to goof up with a funny story, but I'll tell it to you a little bit later about Brother Silver. Thank you, Kenny. That was both stories, beautiful. <laughs> Who else? I have one. This is Diane, Sister Diane Manfredi. Uh -huh. um, my grandmother was Sister Millie Cristello. And I can remember when I was very, very young, she used to rock me in her rocking chair and sing so many hymns from the Green Hymnal. And I can just remember feeling the love from her and feeling love from God. And, and she... She's instilled in me the love for God. And um, and that is, to me, that is, it, it's a beautiful memory and it stays with me all the time. What a beautiful transference of love. That is, what a lovely story. Nice. God bless you. Who else? Brother Doug, I just got a phone call from <clears throat> my daughter and she told me that my nephew in Ohio <clears throat> has stage four cancer and he's decided not to have any more chemo. So they put him on hospice, but he fell down today and he's in great pain. And he fortunately, unfortunately, he doesn't come to church. He hasn't gone to any church, but he's called for my nephew, Ron, to go and anoint him. So I'm glad to hear that part. We'll be praying as well. Thank you for sharing that with yeah. us. His what, name what is, is his name. His name is Mike. Mike. Mike Givanone. Thank you for telling us, Sister Betty. It's hard to make a request after that, but I apologize moving forward. Is there anyone else who wants to share a, an early memory before we move on? Um, Mike. I would say my earliest memory, and you know, it's true. Some of your memories are because of tragedies, you know, you remember. Trauma and I, I was, you know, a little kid and I loved to run, always loved to run. And my mom and dad were having family over, it was cousins, and they were having dinner, going to make dinner. And I, of course, was running around and they were broiling steak on a broiler the broiler was the lower part of the oven. You know, they actually had a separate drawer that came out from under the mm -hmm. oven. And they told me, stay away. Well, I went running and I tripped on that broiler and I went both hands right onto it. And I can remember screaming my, and looking at my hands. They were like beet red. And I remember, you know, my mom picking me up and they were trying to put some stuff on it and, you know, console me and everything. Um, and I'm sure they show me love at other times, you know, but it was, you know, such a tra you know, tragic thing and, you know, scared and, you know, I had to have been so small for me to, you know, really trip, fall forward onto that broiler because it was the bottom part. It wasn't even part of the stove. It was the lower part of the stove, you know, like a drawer that comes out from underneath it. So I don't know how young I was at that. But Brother Ken reminded me, man, did I have love on some stuffed animals my goodness they were in bed with me all the time i i can remember that too so beautiful thank you for sharing thanks sister terry anyone else i don't want to cut anyone off but i'm also not going to wait we have four categories sister patty are you opening your mic I have. I I really had a problem with this. I, I I've gone back and forth and back and forth, and uh, with you asking even on Sunday, what is you know your earliest memory of feeling the love of God? You know, I thought about it. And I thought I really 
don't remember my first feeling. I, 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 when I think of myself as a small child and so on, I just believe that I always knew that God loved me. I just felt it. Um, and I don't know that this memory is pure love, but it's what came to me. And I was, I was three years old and this is my memory because nobody else knows that this happened. But I was outside our, our uh, first home, which was in the middle of Detroit and, and we were in a neighborhood. And, uh, and what was struck out is I stuck out is really, I think we were the only white people on the street at that point. You know, they, it was a completely black neighborhood. And I was just playing kind of outside of the house when there were some small boys who came and they were like throwing stones at things and they were going to throw stones at me. And one little black boy said, don't throw stones at her. That's my girlfriend's sister. <laughs> and so he would have been talking about Cindy, but as far as I know, maybe they were in school together, but they were definitely not boyfriend and girlfriend because I guess, well, they could have been. She was five at the time because I was three. <laughs> but that really was, in a way, sweet, innocent love <laughs> protecting <Yeah>. me. <laughs> it was actually love squared because uh, whether <laughs> they were boyfriend or girlfriend or not, they were boyfriend and girlfriend in his mind. And I, <laughs> as, as I heard that story, I, I thought, oh, I need to defend him. Make sure Patty knows. I had multiple girlfriends before they ever knew and may still never know that I was a boyfriend and girlfriend. So I, I had little girls I had crushes on and I would have said to someone else, oh, that's my girlfriend. She didn't even know me probably in most cases. I love that story. And I do think that's a really a beautiful extension of love and protection. I love that story. I like it. Good. Last call. Anyone else on this one? Okay, um, first I'm going to share my, my love story, my early love story uh, memory, and then I'm going to share my silver copa story with you. Um, so when I was a, a little boy, um, and I often um, only share the, the difficult challenges that we had in our family, but our family also had a lot of love in it. Uh, when someone has asked me in the past to say, what one word describes your upbringing? I've heard that question at least twice in my life, maybe even three times. The word is the same. And one day I was um, doing premarital counseling with my brother and his, his soon to be wife, now his wife of 20 something years, Kelly. And so we were doing premarital counseling and I asked them both that question. Give me one word to describe your upbringing. Kelly gave her answer and then Dane gave his. And it's the same word I've always used, which is passion. Our house was filled with passion. If it wasn't love, it was hate. If it wasn't hate, it was love. We always felt passion in our house one way or the other. So I usually tell stories of uh, upbringing. They're not always the most flattering. So I want to share this story about um, this man that I shared space with in my home, which was my father. And he wasn't always home because he traveled for a living. And when he was home, um, he I saw him as this huge, powerful man, six foot, 210 pounds as long as I can remember, um, and uh, an incredible athlete, just this huge man, very, very scary to me. Uh, and, and that same figure that, that dominated my mind in that fashion often put me to bed when he was back home and not traveling. And I can remember as a little boy up until probably middle school, when he would put me to bed, he'd sit and talk to me and ask me questions really deep, beautiful conversation. And he, and we'd always, as soon as he got you know, sat on the side of our bed, we'd pull our shirts up because we knew with those, those rough hands that built kitchen cabinets and worked at manual labor all the time and calloused, he would tickle our backs. And it, it, it was the most tender, tender moments. Um, to this day, I can get emotional just thinking about how I wish I could just pull my shirt up right now while I'm talking to you. My father would, with those scratchy hands, tickle my back. And so love as a, as a memory is a very, very strong emotion for all of us. 
Um, and so I'm glad some of you were able to recall and share with us. I hope it touched you all as deeply as it did me. And I, I thank those of you who shared. Now, Brother Ken, I, I'm going to scroll just a little bit so I can make eye contact with you while I tell you this story. So I, I can't get Sister Kathleen on because I know she grew up under the voice of Brother Silver as well. So one day we were working at the, at the uh, Hollywood branch. We were working under the eave. And Brother Silver was a carpet layer, if you all don't know that about his trade. Yeah. And so he was always physical in everything he did. And, and we saw him as um, just always strong and could do anything. So here we are working on this eve. And Brother Silver is on a tall ladder and working kind of upside down and, and trying to do some work. And he and I was I was holding the ladder underneath him and working on the walls right beneath him. So I think I'm the only person who heard him say this. And as he reached up, I, I heard him go, oh, and he grabbed his shoulder and he said this phrase, that Joe Namath, he's nothing but a liar. So <laughs> no one would understand what he was talking about. What is he talking about? I knew immediately what he was saying. Joe Namath used to do a commercial on either Ben Gay or Heat. And when your shoulders are sore or your joints are sore, rub this mm -hmm. on and it's like a miracle it'll work. There is Brother Silver. He must have put this on before he came to work had to work with us. And as he was stretching, he hurt his shoulder. And just <laughs> without even thinking, that Joe Namath, he's nothing but a liar. So when, <laughs> when I saw him up on your shoulders, Ken, I thought, that's where he first hurt his shoulder, holding Kenny up on his shoulders. All right, let's move on <laughs> to our second assignment. Assignment number two, what is your favorite or a favorite, again, love song? Not a hymn, a song that you know. I've got one. Yes. And it, it's one that really chokes me up because I usually end up losing it by the end of the song. Yep. Uh, it came on my playlist the other day. I had to pull off the side of the road and I listened to it like, like 20 times. It's just, it's a... Uh, it's a song by Kathy Matea. It's called Where Have You Been? And it's about this woman who uh, was just about ready to give up on love. So she evidently was praying for a mate. And so she meets this guy. They fall in love. And, um, well, I, I, can re I can read you some of the words if, if you want. It... it it goes, uh, Claire finally had all but given up when she and Edwin fell in love. She touched his face and shook her head in disbelief. She said, sighed and said, in my dreams, I've held you near. Now at last, you're really here. Mm -hmm. Where have you been? I've looked for you forever in a day. Where have you been? I'm just not myself when you're away. And it goes on to go through the story of their life on how he would snore and she lived with him for 60 odd years <laughs> and they they would never they never spent a night apart except for one time when he was late getting home and then she goes into the whole where have you been thing again and at the end they are both in a hospital on different floors and and claire loses her memory and forgets the names of family and she never spoke a word again. And then one day they wheeled him in, her husband, and he held her hand and stroked her hair. And in a fragile voice, she said, where have you been? I've looked for you forever in a day. Where have you been? I'm just not myself when you're away. Beautiful song. Beautiful. Thank you. Brother Scott? Yes, go ahead. But Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Doug. I'm on. I'm on the wrong Zoom. Um, did you mean that we should uh, could refer to the songs of Zion on love? Next one. Next question number three. Assignment number three. You can go to your songs of Zion. Assignment number two is just a love song. Just a. Okay, we'll wait then, right? Mm -hmm. I can tell you when I was a little girl, and maybe some of you heard this song, and some of you may not. Is you are my sunshine. Oh, right. <laughs> and in that song, it says, um, you never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. And, you know, I hadn't heard that song for many years. And my little granddaughter sang it at her great grandpa's funeral in San Diego. And then just yesterday, 
I heard it being played on a commercial. And I said, oh my gosh, I haven't heard it in so many years. And here it is. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. When my grandmother was in the nursing home, there was a woman there who sang that song over and over again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did when we were young. It's, a, it's an old song. Yeah. It's a good song. Yes, who it else? is. Who else? Um, Brother Judd? Yes. This is a song by Alan Jackson. Uh-huh, sure. And it's called Remember When. Oh, yeah. And it's like, the, uh, it's a couple. They've been married for a while. They've had kids. And the song talks about their ups <clears throat> and downs in marriage. But they're still together. And, you know, it, it's just such a beautiful song. And he, he's really a good singer, too. So yeah, it's Remember When. And not bad to look at, too, I might add. He's a tall, tall, blonde country singer. Um, that is the first song on my country heartstrings playlist. Oh, really? Oh, okay. yeah, I love that. Song. I, I love, love that. <laughs> Who else? <clears throat> Terry, where are you? Are you I in the camp? Oh. I'm here. <laughs> here we go. Okay. I'm never, I'm never gonna let you rest when we can't see, <laughs> can't see your face. Um, if, if I had to pick a love song, it would be from a song called I Have Dreamed. And it's uh, from The King and I. And it's uh, just has a, a, it's a, if you're familiar with it, but he, he is a servant who, or a slave who's in love with the, oh, the girl I... and their, their love is for whatever. And he sings, but it's. It is uh, just a beautiful Rogers and Hammerstein melody and a mm -hmm. great, great shower song. Yeah. So that's probably why I like it because it's you can belt it, you know. Mm -hmm. But but that would probably be among you know the thousand yep. beautiful yep. love songs that are out there that we could pick from. But mm -hmm. that's the one I. I just, I, it was the first one that popped in my mind when I, when you said it was not a church song. Yep. I mm -hmm. thought, oh, oh, that, let's go right there. Hmm. And now I'll sing it for you. No. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay. Flow oh, guitar ready. ready. Let's go. Who else? <laughs> Who else? Um, the one I had, I posted on Facebook <laughs> so you can listen. It's B.E. Taylor. He's a local guy um, had grown up around here and he made several albums um, and he made a lot of vitamin L, you know, the love, but my favorite of his was um, goes along with um, Alan Jackson. I'd love you all over again. And again, Aww. it's about a couple that's been married for a while and, you know, he's thanking her for the memories and everything. And, and I, I always, it just is beautiful. And he says, if I had my life to live over, I'd do it, you know, all over again with you. You know, I'd love you all over again. So I, it, it's just, it is, it goes along with what um, Sister Terry said about Alan Jackson. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Terry. Um, I feel like um, I have uh, this love song but it's not between a man and a woman. Right. It is Puff the Magic Dragon. Mm. And mm -hmm. that the love that that little boy had for the dragon. Um, it's When I hear it today, it makes me cry. How sweet. Thank you. Little Jackie Paper. Mm -hmm. I love that song. I won't tell you what a lot of people believe the interpretation of that song is because we'll keep it as a beautiful love song between a little boy and the dragon. Oh, yeah. Well. My mom I had one. That uh, when I was when I was going with my husband before we got married, we went into New York. We heard this song Young Love. Have you ever heard that one? Young Love for And yeah. you heard it for the uh, Ken oh, yeah. and we fell in love with that, and my husband and I both sang it on a tape, and it goes, uh, young love, 
they try to tell me us were too young to really be in love. And I was only 19. Yeah. I didn't know what love was. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. I, had a, I had a good husband. So it was just beautiful. Look how it takes you back as you tell us that story. Beautiful. Who else? It's funny, my mom used to make me sing Puff the Magic Dragon to her. And, you know, I can't carry a tune, but she used to make me sing it all the time to her. But uh, when I think of a love song, I think of, you know, of course, my husband and the love that we had for each other and this magic moment. That's the one that always popped into my head. You know, it's just about two people that fell in love and loved each other forever, you know? What was it? What's it called? This magic moment. Oh, this magic moment. Anyone else? I often, I often tell my children that, um, and some of you may not know this artist at all, but I often tell my children that they would not be here if it weren't for Teddy Pendergrass singing love songs to Candace and I uh, when we dated. Uh, it was just one of the most romantic song, song singers that we knew. Uh, but that's not my favorite song. Uh, my favorite love song has to do with Candace. And we dated, um, for those who don't know our love story, I lived in West Palm Beach, Florida. She lived in Pittsburgh, uh, Alacopa, Pennsylvania for the three and a half years we dated. And so the song that was sung at our wedding by her brother and the, the trio in Alacopa was a song by England Dan and John Ford Coley. And it's... Yeah. One have to say goodbye again and um, when I hear that even to this day I can't I can't be with anybody else when that song plays because I get like like these squirts and I get all emotional I should not be seen <laughs> I start blubbering over that song uh, and our good news is we've never had to say goodbye since we, we got married so it's a very very powerful song to us all right let's get to the next assignment number three what is your favorite or a favorite if you can't come to the favorite love him and I made a note just so that no one felt, again, painted into a corner. You can pick any Christian song, too, as long as it has to do with love on a spiritual level. What's your favorite or a favorite uh, spiritual song? Mine is Jesus Loves Me. And I sing that every night when I lay my head down on the pillow. I sing that first, that one verse is all I need. I know Jesus loves me, and it's been one of my uh, sweetest loving songs all these years. I live. A, I have a lot of other songs that I love, but that mm -hmm. one is favorite to my heart. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you. I have a song uh, that I really love. Now it doesn't have the word love in it, okay. but to me, it's just it shows expresses the love of Christ that He had for us. And it's at the cross. I just love that song because it's it's so basic. The words are so beautiful about the sacrifice of Christ. Beautiful choice. Beautiful choice. And that is Being a love song. I'm sorry, I talked over someone. I apologize. Good, good. I'm done. I'm done. Oh. Being the uh, nature nut that I am, you could probably guess mine. In the garden. I thought you meant in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a conversation between me and God, and I'd walk with them, I'd talk with them. And that's where the disciples acted more natural than they ever had before by <laughs> falling asleep and not supporting him. So, yes, it's nature to the nth degree. Very good. <laughs> Who else? Thank you, Dee. Hi, Brother Doug. It's Sister Ann. Hi. I, well, I didn't get a chance to say one of my, but one of my old time favorite love, so love songs was Unchained Melody. Yes. Unchained Melody. That's, everybody has to know that one. Yep. As far as for um, me, Songs of Zion, have, God has always spoken to me through the, from the very first time. I mean, from the beginning. And most recently, you know, um, a few months ago, Rick was really bad and in the hospital and I couldn't be with him you know he was there fight and he was just getting worse it was awful awful and the fourth night there was a lady circle meeting with imperial and it was the first time i heard the song he will hide me in his pavilion 
And it's uh, from Psalms 27, 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And um, I, I mean, I was to where I just didn't know what we were going to, I was afraid he was going to die in the hospital, you know? So how the song goes, it, it, God has not promised a flowery pathway, nor has he promised an easy ride, but he has promised to never leave us and place us safely where we can hide. God has not promised no pain will find us, nor has he promised no tears will fall, but he has promised with great compassion to always hear us when we call. God has not promised the smoothest sailing, nor has he promised the swiftest tide, but he has promised across the waters, one day we'll reach the other side. And and then this is the praise part that I feel like, you, you know, you can't praise him. The chorus is, oh, he will hide me in his pavilion and set me up upon a rock. So I will thank him now and forever. My songs of praise will never stop. And that very next day, a doctor, um, so... I guess this is not just how I feel like a song that I will, I, I just can't stop praising him, but also how he sees us, you know, and how he loves us. Because the very next day, the doctor was, came in to see Rick and she told him what they were doing, treating him was just killing him, killing mm. his liver. They, they had to stop. And so then they stopped all of it and he discharged himself and he came home and he was pitiful looking, but he got better. And so, you know, I knew that God, and, you know, I didn't know what to do. So I, I was so thankful. And that, that's how God shows his love for us, you know, when in, in times of um, trouble like that, you know, when you just absolutely, and you've done all you can and there's nothing else and you think there's almost no hope. And so I just can't praise him enough or even praise it. I mean, I could pull tens of songs out of here. Number 121 is my, one of my, the journey was easy, which really it's not. But, you know, he sees us with all of our down sittings and all of, and he still loves us and he's there for us and he sees our tears. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of this gospel and um, the church of Jesus Christ and to have the family of Christ and all of you in my life. And, and most importantly, to have God. So um, thank you all for giving me this moment to <clears throat> testify. Brother Doug? Yes, sir. Brother Doug? Yes, ma'am. Um, we have five songs in the Songs of Zion that speak of love. It would be 13, I'll never know why God's great love. 14, knowing God's love. Um, 64, and I feel his love close in around me. Number 11, is there some love shown? And number 100, God loves her children. He calls them his own. All in the gold book. Thank you for sharing that. That's nice, Sister Betty. Thank you. <clears throat> something beautiful, something good, all my confusion, he understood. I can never escape that hymn without weeping. Brother Doug, yes. this is Sister Joanne Trainer, uh -huh. and one thing that I always pray for is peace, peace, peace in my life. So number 82, Wonderful Peace in the Green Book, awesome. also, are you here with that comfort and rest, marching down the rough pathway of time, which we are. Make Jesus your friend, are the shadows grow dark. Oh, except of this peace so sublime. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. That's what I base everything on, peace. And you, beautiful. Thank you for sharing the verse, too. Who else? I have one, Doug. It's a, uh, you know, you know the song, It's How He Loves by David Crowder. And it just uh, would, 
would so beautiful verses, but uh, in the chorus, he just he continues, he just repeats over and over and over again. Oh, how he loves us! Oh, how he loves us! Oh, how he loves us! And you can just feel it every time he sings it. It's it's uh, there's a depth to the uh, the vocal that uh, he just he believes it. You know, it sinks in. Special memories for me with that song. So. You don't know this, I'm sure, but every time um, any Crowder song comes on, if, if Candace and I are together, we say it out loud. If I'm by myself, I think it. And if Candace is by herself, <laughs> she thinks it. But you introduced us to Crowder. And I believe it may have even been that song that we used in a powerful way at one of our seminars that we did together. Uh, but that's when you introduced, I don't know if it was that song, but that's when you introduced us to Crowder. And he's been a blessing of mine. But know this. That every time, the, I said he, every time the group sings, um, but with your beard, you remind me a little bit of Crowder tonight, but um, every time <laughs> I see or hear them, I, I'm blessed in, in remembering you. I want you to know that. So I'm so glad you shared that song. It just reminds me how much I love you. <clears throat> Who else? Love you too. Brother Doug, yes. um, I had an experience about the love of God. And I love all the hymns and I really enjoy them. I sing aloud by myself that where I'll have my Alexa and sing right along with Alan Jackson. But the song, but what I experienced the love from our God, I guess it was a vision. And since then I sing, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? And it was wonderful. I experienced the love that he has for us. It was beautiful. I love it. Even I come to the garden alone. They're all just beautiful hymns, even the songs of Zion. Poets have a way of really affecting us. Uh, even those poets who put their their poetry to to music and they become songs and hymns. Um, but yeah, they they touch us all so deeply. Thank you for sharing that, Sister Jen. Who else? Or anyone else? The song that comes to mind for me is the one by Sister Esther Dyer. The love, oh, what love. First love. Yeah. Yes, I couldn't remember the exact name of it. That was a song that came to my mind. Yeah. I, actually, I thought that same one. Um, and I always, when I hear that, Sister Kathleen, it's always, it's, for me, it's always Kenny and Kenny. Because I always think, and I don't know if my recall is correct. It doesn't matter. It's correct in my mind. But I always think it, it was Kenny Staley who helped introduce that to the rest of us at campouts and Kenny mm -hmm. Lombardo taught us how to sing it by doing it in a choir. I'm assuming he must have done it in a choir at some point because that's my imprint for that song, the, the Kenny Kenny uh, double double trouble duo that, that brought that to me. <laughs> I love that song as well. Anyone else? Yeah, Brother Doug. Yeah. <clears throat> My favorite song is 86 out of Songs of Zion, the latter day theme. Is it okay if I read the two verses real please, quick? Please, please. The better part of a lifetime in defense of a dream, listening very intently to the latter day theme, watching every horizon certain one day to see all the beauty of Zion there unfolding to me. Call for every North country, every isle of the sea, to return God's people to the land of the free. Sing the fair songs of Zion, hear the message they bring, introducing with pleasure the latter day, the blessed latter day theme. They say that old bones will flourish and our babies won't die and our children won't leave home so their mothers won't cry. And they say the wolf shall soon lie down with the lamb and the lion and the fig the fig tree has blue has buds now and there's bloom on the vine. That was the first song that God put in my heart to just love when I came to this church. And to me, it's kind of like a summary of our, our hopes, you know, the love that God has for his people and the goodness of him giving the gift of these songs alone and hearing the message each song. Because every song, when I first heard them, I fell in love with them. They're all my favorite, you know. I, I would say one's my favorite, but then I'd hear another, and it's like, well, that's my favorite today. And then tomorrow, it's another one, but 
I just <laughs> thank God for his love that he would give us these things, give us these songs, and that, you know, knowing of the hope that's to come and how much love he has for his people. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, too. Anyone else? Mine was the, the hymn, He. And um, that really got me before I was baptized. And that's that song just would envelop me and was one that brought me, I would say, toward baptism. Mm. Oh, and also there was an experience about first love back in uh, the conference of April 1961. And um, that, that was interesting. I was surprised I even had it. So um, I could, I don't know, forward it to you, Brother Doug, or something. Yeah, please. Yeah, that's beautiful, please. Did you say 19, what year? It was April of 1961. It was recorded in, com in conference. Wow, okay, thank you. And I'm not exactly sure who actually had the dream. Okay. Oh, it was a dream, but the wasn't. That's not when the song came out. Right. The, the song. Which, what was the song? First love. First love. Yeah, because that was uh, eighty, late eighties. Wait, eighty five. White Oak Campout was eighty five, and the song had just come out that year. So, the we're talking about the Esther Dyer song. So maybe inspired, maybe inspired by that experience. I'd love to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I, and I know I've heard this before about the candles. I don't know it. I don't know it. You don't never heard of it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else favorite him or Christian song? All right. Assignment number four. Share with us your favorite poem or a love poem that's affected you. It's tough. Yeah, this one was a tough assignment. Brother Doug, I got one. Good. And in my whole life, I never thought that I had a chance to share this with anybody. Oh. Because I read a lot, but I don't have people to share with. So I just have to go into words. So you're not going to see my face, but I'm going to read the poem. I am so excited. To we read can't it. see your face anyway, Terry. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. All right, I'm going out. I'll be right in. Okay. What? All right. Can, can you hear me? It's daylight. It was daylight. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. This is my favorite love poem, and it's written by Robert Burns, a Scottish poet. My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. So fair thou art, my bonnie laughs, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. Till all the seas ga gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun. I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands of life shall run. And fare thee well, my only love, and fare thee well a while, and I will come again, my love, though it were. 10,000 mile. And that's my song. That's my poem. Well, thank Sweet. you for sharing that. I love that you waited to, to read that at some point, and this was your opportunity. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just it. not sure why. We're just not sure why the screen had to go black for you to read that to us. But it <laughs> because I, so great. I had to. I, I can't get I can't get my word up if I had Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is not from my brain. You okay. know? Okay. I don't read it. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. Oh, dear. Thank you. Read from the heart. Anybody <laughs> else? I got one. Well, actually, I have a 
I have two, but I'll I'll give you one pick that's not yeah, pick your favorite and read it to me. One that's not too wanting. This this is uh, more or less an explanation of love. Love is in our hearts, love is in our mind. Love breaks down all barriers, love is always blind. Love can soothe or break your heart. Love can heal or tear you apart. Love can warm or leave you cold. Love never ages. Love is in your soul. Love can make you happy. Love can make you cry. Love will never compromise. Love will never die. Love has no price. Love is free. Love is all around you. Take a look, you'll see. Love is made for everyone. Love's from up above. Love's a gift from God, and God's a gift of love. Hmm. Nice. That's beautiful. You know, that, that poem, that one verse in that poem is really what this assignment was all about. You read something along the lines, love is all around you. And that's the whole purpose of this assignment was to have all, all five of these assignments, I should say, to have you go searching for these different subjects on love or these different uh, facets of love so that you would study during the week on the subject of love. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I hope that's what you found as you were searching. Anyone else with a love poem? Thank you, Dee, as always. And, and what I love, someone said this last week, what I love about this, this assignment and these exercises is we're learning a little bit about each other each time. Uh, one of you picks a song or picks a poem it's a little bit of a, a insight further to your hearts and your minds. So this is really mm -hmm. fun. To Who else? I have one. And you've probably heard it before because it's Shakespeare's sonnet 116. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. I have one that <clears throat> is in a birthday card from my husband, but he never got to give it to me. I found it in a drawer, but it's a birthday poem for you. When I kiss you, when I miss you, when I'm feeling tired or lazy, when we're busy in a tizzy, when I drive you kind of crazy, when we're romantic or almost frantic, when we're apart or we're together, one thing's certain, and I'm not just flirting. I love you with all my heart forever. And yeah. uh, he never did, he never had a chance to give it to me, but I found it. He had uh, bought it for me. You win, Sister Betty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did Kenny say? I you said win. You, you win. Oh, yeah. For the purpose, for oh, the yeah. found it. Aye, aye, aye. Anyone else want to read a poem? <clears throat> Sister Patty, I'm, I couldn't get my, my uh, unmute uh, hit. So I apologize, but I love anything um, Shakespeare uh, only because of the depth that we go um, with him and, and or whoever or whoever was if it wasn't Shakespeare whoever wrote uh, for Shakespeare. Last call. Anyone else have a poem? They the only share? thing I thought of was uh, the part in the prayer of Saint Francis of Assisi where he says makes the uh, statement about uh, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Um, I just, you know, that whole prayer seems to embody the sum total of, of love. Um, I can read it. I've got it. I'm not one for poetry at all. I don't think I have one book of poems in my house. Um, 
but it's Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me bring love. Where there's offense, let me bring pardon. Where there's discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there's doubt, let me bring faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, let me bring your light. Where there's sadness, let me bring joy. Oh, Master, let me seek, not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving one receives. It is in self-forgetting that one finds. It is in pardoning that one is pardoned. It is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. I will have poetry in my life and adventure and love, but love above all. Assignment number five, share with us a love quote. I have one from Helen Keller. It Thank says, you. the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And if it goes, if we want to do spiritual, of course, it's John 316. <laughs> the first one sounds so much like the uh, little prince quote, um, which I adore. I'm not going to skew it now. You just captured it, but it sounds like the one from Little Prince. I've only seen the heart. Who else? Was someone saying something? I have one, but it needs some context first. It It's actually from one of my favorite TV shows, and I alluded to this before. It's from MASH. Love the show. I know it backwards and forwards so much so that I have it as my, uh, my tablet set to an hour to go to sleep while it's on, and it shuts <laughs> off. But it, it's from an episode called Blood Brothers. And, and the quote comes from the character Father Mulcahy, the priest. And in, in it, the context is that the, um, the priest was very upset because he, <laughs> he was trying to impress uh, a cardinal that was coming, that he truly idolized more or less and so he was very dismissant to everybody else because people were gambling and this and that and he was looking at how everything reflected on him but yet in the hospital there were two wounded soldiers and one of the actors was actually uh patrick swayze and in it do you know the episode no I don't. okay yes. it, and in it Swayze is talking to his friend who's having troubles, um, you know, coming around. And he would just talk to him and, and he would kind of react. And it got to the point where he needed blood. And so they tested his blood and then it came to the point where they had, Hawkeye had to tell him, we can't. We, he was wondering why everybody was making a fuss over him over a simple blood test. And he had to tell him that he had leukemia. I don't know if this was a precursor to further down the road when he had cancer in real life, the mm -hmm. actor. But anyways, McKay goes and sits with him to comfort him and he misses the service. He finally comes back to it and he basically apologized to everyone and he was so distraught over his behavior. And his quote was, God didn't put us here for that pat on the back. He created us so he could be here himself. So that he could exist in the lives of those he created in his image. Mm. And I always thought that that was a really beautiful quote because we are created in his image and that was the first act of love that he created us. That's beautiful. Nicely done, Steve. I have moved too. Go ahead. Who else? Sorry. 
Brother Doug, I have one, but once again, I have to go out. So, <laughs> well, miss your forehead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, this is really actually recent, and it's um, from Martin Sheen. I'm waiting for the document to open up. Oh, dear. Okay. All right. He says, I think we've forgotten something that is a deep part of our humanity. And that is that we serve ourselves best when we serve others first. I love that. That's beautiful. so like, so like Jesus, you know, said, okay, uh, be, was now my, Bishop, my head in that. Terry, Martin, was, that, was that Bishop Sheen or Martin Sheen? Martin Sheen. The actor. Mar the actor from West Wing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, can you see more than my the top of my head? No. We see your, we see your glasses this time. We really see a lot. I see one eye. <laughs> I see uh, one eye. Do you see me better now? Yeah. Oh, yes. Can't you I mean, see your own? Can't you see your own screen? No, I can't. I can't <laughs> see my own screen it, unless. It, yeah. It, 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 Go to your right a little. Oh, oh. Go to go to my right. <laughs> I think it would be your right. <laughs> Never mind. The other right. <laughs> Carrie, if you look at the gallery view. Oh, there you are. You're good yeah. now. Then now? You can okay. see your face. There you go. Oh boy, what a delight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is to us. Yes, yes. 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 Thank you. Who else has Thank a quote? Who else has a quote? I have a quote. Thank you. What most people need to learn in life is how to love people and use things instead of using people and loving things. Oh. Great one. Good. Who else? Anybody else with a quote? Uh, uh, my yeah. favorite is John 316, like Sister Terry said. I think everybody knows it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever so mm -hmm. believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Just remind you that that verse speaks to the entirety of his creation. We often we often embrace that scripture, thinking it's it's the believers or whosoever in that in that scripture. They, they are called the whosoever's. The who, it's not just for the whosoever's. For God so loved the world that he only begotten Son, and so it's our responsibility in his absence as his surrogate to love the world. Everybody we come in contact with. Beautiful verse. Thank you, Sister Betty. And thank you, Sister Terry, because I know you referenced uh, uh, John 3.16, too. You want to make sure you get a star on your forehead as well. <laughs> Brother Doug? Oh, yes. Um, I wanted to, I don't normally share this, but I, I really, God gave me a wonderful dream. And um, it was like I saw the sky, and then I saw the words, I love you. And then it was signed, God. And I, I just, you know, see, that's so nice. So wonderful. I got a note. <laughs> Sister Terry, I often use the phrase, that's your, that's your love letter from God. And I really mm -hmm. do believe that, that when we get these little experiences, and, and by the way, I, I, I want to correct myself. I never try to use the phrase little experiences. There are yeah. no little experiences. They're all, they're all grand. They're all magnificent. Mm -hmm. So when we get these magnificent um, communications from God, whether by dream or hearing his voice or, or mm -hmm. just uncovering something or feeling inspiration, that's his love letter to you. He is personally mm -hmm. whispering to you, I love you. So that is beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. Anyone else with a love quote? I um, wanted, I'm sorry, I know I spoke already. I apologize to everybody. Um, there was a movie one time and Brother Dwayne reminded me of something, you know, cause he was talking about MASH, but there was a movie 
with uh, Brad Pitt. I can't remember who all was in it. It was a river runs through it. Yes. Some of you may know it. Beautiful. Um, but the Brad Pitt was one of the brothers that had a, a drinking problem and, you know, issues. And the other brother went to follow in his dad's footsteps, I believe, like to, you know, be like a minister. And when he came back, you know, and he realized how bad his brother was and he tried to get him help. And it did, it just eventually in a, in a negative way, he asked his dad, what could we do? And I re and it just really, what his dad said just really hit me. And he said, sometimes all you can do is just love them, you know, and that, that really, you know, we can't, sometimes we can't change any, you know, we can't change anybody or anything, but we can just love them. Genuinely, fully, completely, if possible, unconditionally, just love. Anyone else? Of course, there's always the verse that says, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life yep. for his mm -hmm. friends. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I said earlier, um, I, I didn't know if this would be a two-part class. It will be. Um, the planning I have for the class will hold till next week. We'll follow up. So keep everything in mind that we, we gathered from each other tonight. I do have a quote. I'll throw mine up. It's, um, it's almost everything that's important to me in this one quote. And by that, I mean, there's a, there's, the, the one first phrase sounds very much like a, a comment from Jesus Christ, but it's actually from Paul McCartney. So it's Jesus first, the Beatles second. Um, the third is, is Charlie Brown, which is one of my favorites. And the fourth is my favorite comfort food. So this is my quote. All you need is love, but a little chocolate now and then doesn't hurt. And it's written by Charles Schultz. <laughs> Who is the creator of, of Snoopy and, and Charlie Brown and the blanket? Um, so that's, we'll end, sadly, we'll end this Tuesday night service with that quote. <laughs> but for me, it, it covers all the important things in my life, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so tonight we, we, we explored a lot of different facets of love. Uh, and Sister Terry's uh, reflection on this movie probably should be the close to, to this all. Sometimes all you can do is just love and love them, whoever them is. Um, the difficulty in our life is finding the them because usually the thems in our life are the most unlovable and the hardest to love. And the minister who understood said that all we can do in those cases is love and it's, it's perfect counsel for the perfect mm -hmm. situation. So I would remind you all just that that we are in the absence of uh, a physical savior. We are those surrogates who should love and bring Jesus Christ to other people. And we do it by example. We do it by, by modeling the lessons of Jesus Christ. And the lessons of Jesus Christ are simply this, to love. And so I would just remind you that as we're on peace, love, and joy, you may be that individual who brings peace to someone through your love and ultimately guides them to joy. And so your, your role is probably more significant than you think. I'm going to jump to the end of the, the slides. I'm just not going to go there. I'm just going to tell you what your homework assignment is because we'd have to get through about 15 slides to get to your homework assignment. So I'm just going to do it by recall. Your homework assignment, and I would ask you truly to, to do this assignment for your betterment. The, the asterisk to this is we will not share these next week. So, so I say mm -hmm. that feel safe doing your homework. And your homework is this, literally, physically, and, and tangibly. I want you to write a letter to God. And to be more clear, I want you to write a love letter to God. Maybe point out to him why you love him, but most definitely tell him you love him. 
express to him that I love you. I don't know how you're going to put that. Uh, I don't know if you emote. I don't know if you emote overtly in your relationships, but I'm asking you to be bold and courageous and make sure you tell the Lord that you love him. And I want you to list, if you can, the reasons that you love him. And if at, at the end of that, whatever those reasons are, if at, at the end of that, there are still needs you have or wants that you have, both are acceptable, either wants or needs, I want you to write those down in your letter to God. This letter can be a paragraph. This letter can be 16 pages. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters completely, but it doesn't, the assignment, it doesn't matter to the assignment. It matters to you. I want you to take this assignment very, very seriously so that as you write down and then reread it, you see your relationship with God in the ink in front of you. Any mm -hmm. questions to your, your homework assignment this week? I have one question. Yes, ma'am. Do you have an address where to send it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that address is bound on your knees. <laughs> that's, that's where that address. <laughs> Got it. Okay. The longer you go, the closer you'll get to them. <laughs> you can hand deliver that, Sister Joanne. <laughs> what a great, what a great question. Mm -hmm. Anything else from anybody else? All right. I'm going to try to get the entirety of this class out there so that you can go back and, and watch this if you'd like to um, online. I'll post it. First, I post it on YouTube, and then I bring it over to Facebook. It's on either or. But you may want to go back and capture some of these quotes, capture some of these songs, list them out, some of the comments of your sharing with one another. This was a beautiful class. I appreciate it the courage each one of you had. First, the courage to attend tonight. Because why I say it takes courage to attend is every time we come to church, every time we do anything like this, there's more responsibility gained by being together. Maybe mm -hmm. you learned something or, or something became clear to you. Now you're responsible for that behavior. Maybe you heard something that's going to require a behavior change. Now you got to follow up with it. To me, that's pure courage. So I want to first thank everyone who courageously attended uh, our service tonight. And second, I want to thank everyone who shared. It's really hard to do this, to bear your soul like you all did tonight. So I want to thank you. If you testify on a Sunday, if you share in a class like this, we kind of take that for granted. And we don't often stop and pause and acknowledge that. I want to do that tonight. I want to say to each of you how spectacular that is. When people come and visit for the first time at the church, rarely do they remember a sermon, rarely. But they're always taken by the honest sharing and the courage of the brothers and sisters and, and visitors who stand on their feet and praise God. Or if it's virtual, who sit in their chairs on big screen and praise God. That's what people who attend for the first time always remember. What a, what a group of courageous people who would share of themselves with each other. So I want to acknowledge that and say to you all how much I love these Tuesday nights because of you all. So I pray that God blesses you for your courage. I pray that you do your homework assignment, write your letter to God, and, and connect, hopefully, differently than you have before. Sometimes when we write, we start to, the, the pen starts to flow, and before you know it, You've said some things and articulated some things you didn't know were in you. So that's what I'm hoping you'll have. I'm a writer. I love writing. Um, I, I sit on a daily basis and write and just write. And it, I don't journal. I write with purpose of doing something with whatever it is I'm writing. So I say that to say that's the, the things that come out of your, your pen are, are sometimes just amazing. And so I want to say to all of you, please write your letter to God. Only two are going to see that unless you share it with another person, but only you and God are going to share that, that intimacy. And I hope and pray that he gets the benefit of your writing this week. So please follow up with that.